Good morning, First Baptist. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning for those of you that are watching online. This is an online service, and we certainly appreciate you joining us for this morning's service. I do have a couple of announcements. I do want to announce that on next Sunday, next Sunday, we will be doing induction of officers. We're asking that all officers please show up for the morning service so that we can induct you into your office. Deacons, trustees, and other officers, please plan to join us for that service. Also at the church, we have a year-end financial report that we would like for you to join up with us. We will give that year-end financial report. God bless you, God keep you, and may heaven smile upon you. Again, uh, stay safe where you are. We're here this morning, and we want to thank you for joining us for this service. This morning, we do have a word from the Lord, and we want to come from Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We want to pick up on verse 18 and following. Matthew chapter 4. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them. And immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Let us take a moment and go to the throne as we prepare ourselves for what the Lord has to say. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this morning for your amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found was blind, but now I see. I ask that you speak, Lord, by way of your spirit. We do honor you, Lord, for your amazingness and how you continue to bless in a mighty way. Speak as only you can, for this is our prayer that some soul may hear this message and want to know how they can be saved. Some saved person may want to know how they can continue to live in such a way and walk in such a way that's pleasing in your sight. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. We indeed do pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, the message is, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. You know, uh, well, I, I enjoy fishing. Not as much as my son, Evan. He can stay out there for eight hours a day. But I enjoy going for a little time and getting involved in fishing. So I want to ask you the question, how many of you have ever been fishing before? Well, as I indicated, I have. And I enjoy it immensely. But the most important thing I enjoy about fishing is actually catching fish. Well, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you uh, a little story that happened to me when I was in Winston-Salem. When, when serving in the church in Winston-Salem, there was a deacon in the church that told me this story, uh, an experience that, he, uh, that I would never forget. He was driving home from Durham, uh, North Carolina, to Winston-Salem, and he was stopped by the police, and uh, the, uh, the state trooper stopped him and uh, pulled him over, and he was hot because everybody was driving pretty fast. And so when the trooper came up to him, he said, you know why I pulled you over? He said, sir, everybody was just going so fast. I mean, how did you select me out of all of these people? Well, the state trooper said to him, sir, 
have you ever gone fishing? And that perked his interest because he was an avid fisherman. He enjoyed fishing. In fact, it took that frown off his face and actually put a smile on his face. He said, well, yeah, yeah, I've been fishing. And the trooper said to him, you lose a few and you catch a few. And he could not do anything but laugh. So it kind of left him in a good spirit. Fishing is something that just takes time and patience. So this morning, we want to talk to you just a little bit about this particular aspect of things. I can remember specifically learning how to fish from my grandmother. She used to take us to the lake, and we would get out there, and we would fish. After about an hour, I was tired because the lake, oftentimes, the fish would take so long to bite, and I couldn't hardly stand it. But I enjoyed uh, being out there in the sun and sitting on that little stool she had, or, or may I say it was a, like a little barrel, and we would just sit there and just enjoy the moment. But today, my brothers and sisters, we want to talk to you specifically about what Jesus had experienced in this particular situation. Well, the Bible tells us that... Uh, in this context that Jesus had, uh, was walking by the Sea of Galilee. And it's interesting because he was just starting his ministry. If you go back to the beginning of this chapter, you will see before his ministry started, Jesus uh, had to go through some testing. And the devil, t and uh, the, the, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness after having fasted 40 days and 40 nights. It's interesting because of the fact that uh, the devil came after him because he was hungry and told him to turn uh, a stone into bread. And Jesus reminded him that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He gave him two more temptations, took him to the temple and let him look at all that. He said, just throw yourself down and the angels will catch you. He said, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Then he took him on a high mountain and said, all of this, this has been given to me. All these, uh, this stuff here is mine, and I can give it to whoever I wish. If you would just bow down and worship me. And Jesus reminded the devil, you shall worship the Lord thy God and serve him only. He used the word of the living God. And the angels, after that third temptation, came and ministered unto him. But Jesus was about to start his public ministry. And so when he was walking on the Sea of Galilee, he picked his first two disciples, uh, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, were standing out there mending their nets. And Jesus called them and he said, come, follow me. Now, that word come has the implication of immediacy. It's not just for a direction that you just come to me. No, no. But this right here was a directive to come, drop everything that you have right now. I know that you are preparing. You guys have been doing this all of your life. This is what you do. You, uh, you, you fish. You're, you're a professional fisherman. But I want you to come because I'm going to do something in your life that's going to turn the world upside down. Come, come, right now, immediacy. And he said, follow me. Then a little later, and then a little further down, he talked to uh, the, uh, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and, and they dropped their nets, even though they were helping their, their father and also some other servants. Uh, they dropped their nets, and they went and followed the Lord Jesus. We do know that a little later on, there was something significant that happened. But I want to just share with you, my brothers and sisters, uh, the notion of fishing is so critically important. You have to have the right tools. I have here this morning a fishing rod that I use sometimes and my son used uh, in terms of going fishing. Now, back in Jesus' day, they used nets. Yes, that was their primary uh, use of things. But right here in our modern times, we may have a fishing rod. I got a couple of hooks on the end, and my son enjoys going uh, pier fishing. He likes to hook about three, put three hooks on the end, and you throw it in the water. And if the fish come by, you may catch three at a time. But when you do that lake fishing or the, pool, the pond fishing, it may take a while. So the first thing that you need when you are doing fishing is patience. 
You've got to be patient. You can't rush people when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some people may not ever come. Some people may hear the gospel from Sunday to Sunday and not move. But God has given you a spirit of influence. That spirit of influence might be right there in your home to tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And perhaps they will come and give their hearts to him. You can talk to your neighbor. Somebody's out there. We, we, are, we have a sea of folk that need Jesus. There are folk that are mentally challenged, physically challenged. There are people who just don't have the spiritual capacity uh, to, to, to even accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But I got news for you. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, your responsibility is to go and make disciples of other individuals. Disciples making disciples. So he told you to come. Now, in my, I, also I want to point out the fact, not only you have to have the right tools, you just can't have this fishing rod, but there's something on the end of this, this is a weight. Uh, it serves a specific purpose. Now, my grandmother used to have what you call, uh, it was a, a, a long, long stick, if you will. Uh, it was a pole, about nine feet. She would give me that pole and put a float you know, on it, and then, but you, you just can't just throw the hook in the water and expect to get fish you actually have to have bait and you put on the right type of bait depending on what it is you're trying to catch but you have to have something that will attract the fish to that hook now the hook is there to actually hook the fish so that you can actually bring it in so i would cast that uh, that that pole out in the water and the float would float on top of the water now, every now and then, grandmama would say, now, when you see that float dip, that means you're getting some nibbles. <laughs> and the same thing when it comes to the gospel of Christ. Somebody might be sitting here. Somebody might be on your sphere of influence that may be watching your life and how you live your life. The kindness that you show. The fact that you help people out. The fact that you just, you're just living a good Christian life. Or the fact that you speak a word of kindness to them in some way, form, or fashion. And they may be nibbling at the gospel. And that may be your opportunity and grandmama would say yank it a certain way and, and if you did that hook just might get in and then you would catch your fish I remember one time going fishing with her and I caught a fish that looked like it was about 14 or 16 inches but I didn't have all the equipment I reeled that fish in and when I got to the shore when I got it to the shore I couldn't get it out and I took my line and tried to pull it up and it broke off I didn't have all my equipment I needed my net in order to see my brothers and sisters we have to have all of the equipment that that we need to bring in the fish now Jesus told the disciples not only are you good at what you do when it comes to fish but I'm going to have you fish for people in other words you're going to go out here and tell of the gospel of Christ you're going to go out here and draw people some are going to turn away some are not going to listen but there are going to be some that are going to listen to the gospel and they, it's going to make a difference in their lives but first of all you have to have the right equipment the word of the living God prayer you got to be saved and sanctified and filled with God's spirit to get out here and tell somebody about the gospel of Christ it'll make a difference in their lives my brothers and sisters yes sir you not only have to have the float and the weight and all of the things that you need to fish you got to have all of the ingredients of the gospel of Christ to make a difference in people's lives it will make a difference because people may be influenced by what they see in you it may it will make a difference because people may be convinced that the life that you live and, and the works that you do for the gospel of Christ has influenced them to come bring somebody each one reach one we've all got to reach somebody for the gospel of Christ my brothers and sisters it will make a difference in their lives in order to catch fish I want to say to you today we all need to go fishing uh, so, but we need to go fishing for people. And when we talk to people, uh, other people, we want them to know the Lord the way that we know the Lord. Yes, sir. Because the Lord makes a difference in your life. Even when trouble comes, the Lord makes a difference in your life. Heartache may come, but the Lord makes a difference in your life. And when they see all of this, they may be influenced that I need, I also need the Lord in my life. 
So when we learn to say things that will help them get to Jesus, it makes a difference. Oh, we can speak words of kindness. Oh, we want them to see Jesus in us in every way. We want to share what we have when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. It makes a difference, my brothers and sisters. One of the ways that we can do this is to talk to other people at our, wherever we are. Whether it's at school, or whether it's our friends, whether it's our neighbors, whether it's on our jobs, wherever it may, on the streets, or wherever you go. Or you could talk to people about Jesus and invite them to your church and, and invite them to, uh, to learn something. But I challenge you today, you guys, today, uh, for, the, for the upcoming week, talk to somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. It will make a difference. So, my brothers and sisters, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. You see, you want to wonder why churches are empty today? People have stopped fishing. Oh, they've given up because they've become impatient. It's all about them. They're living their own lives and have forgotten about the life that God has given unto them so that they can share it with the world. But if you want to see God do something, each one of you, reach one of you, reach somebody, evangelize, do missionary work, do what the Lord has called you to do. And God has called every one of us, not just the preacher, but also the deacons and the trustees and whomever and the pew member every one of us can do this mission work when he said told Peter and James and John to come he was talking to you and me he's telling us to come and go make disciples come follow me and since we are followers of Christ since we are disciples of Christ since we are following him all the way then we ought to want to bring others along the way as well so my brothers and sisters, as I close, I just want you to know today that your life does make a difference. And sometimes the only Jesus that some folks see is the Jesus that they see in you. Live the life in such a way that would influence them. And then they will see that you are fishing for people. Let's go out and make disciples. Let's go out and fish for people, men, women, boys and girls. Bring your family. Bring even your enemies. Praise God. Maybe your enemies will turn out to be a more like a friendship or an acquaintance instead of actually being. But bring all to the gospel. Bring all to the church. Bring them in and let the Lord fill God's house the way God so desires to do. I tell you, he'll make a difference in your life and he'll make a difference in the lives of those that are around. So my brothers and sisters, let's go fishing. Oh, grab your hook. Uh, grab, grab all the ingredients you need. Grab your pole and let's go fishing and so that we can reel them in. Praise be to God. Let's cast out into the deep and watch Jesus do what Jesus do. Just be patient. Don't become impatient because people don't respond to what you're saying. The Holy Spirit can change hearts and change lives. This is our prayer, that God will help us when we go fishing. So, my brothers and sisters, let's go fishing. God bless you. God keep you, and may heaven smile upon you is our prayer today. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory, glory. We do open the doors of the church. Maybe there's someone that's listening today that you would like to know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. You can call right now. And we have someone to pick up the phone and talk to you about your relationship with the Lord. If that's you, then call right at this moment at 919-552-9150. And if there's anybody that needs salvation, you can talk to that individual about your salvation. You can talk to them uh, uh, that uh, you need prayer on some level. Then we will pray for you. You can send in your prayer request and we'll do it right now. And for those of you that need prayer, let us take a moment and pray for you right now. Those of you that are online. Father, we thank you for we all know, need to know that we need to go fishing for you. Fish for men and women, boys and girls. We ask that you would have your way in the midst. And we give your name thanks, Lord, for all that you do. Have your way right now in the lives of those who are just struggling in some way, form, or fashion. Bring healing and wholeness to their lives. We honor you, Lord, for being the great I am. And God, we pray that prayers will be answered in their lives, in their circumstances and situations, their hurt, their disappointment, their hopelessness and helplessness, that you will bring it together. 
and for them to know that all is well because you are in charge. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name, and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Finally, we would like to invite you uh, to give I, 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 an offering unto the Lord. And if you need to send it in, you can send it in to First Baptist Fuquay, F-U-Q-U-A-Y, P.O. Box 432, Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina, 27526. Or you can go to our website and just go under offerings and do it by way of PayPal. We certainly would appreciate it. I have my offering today, and I want you to do the same because you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. And since we are actually closed today, let me say a prayer over the offering that you're going to send in and the offering that we have here today. Father, we thank you for the offering that has been received. We ask, Lord, that you will bless the endeavors that we have for this offering to build your kingdom here at First Baptist Church. May we spread the gospel. May we go fishing and telling people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, those that are in our area of influence, that we will let somebody know about Jesus. But we can, Lord, we want to just continue to do your work and your will here at First Baptist. Bless this offering, we ask in Jesus' name, and for his sake we pray. Amen. Now, we want you to join us next week as we continue with the gospel of Christ. Again, Let's go fishing. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.